Okay, well hey neighbors, welcome to Shed Shop 2.0 in this edition of How To. I have on my bench, I'm not going to tell you yet, you have to wait and find out. Or it can be a chump and fast forward. Uh, this saw that I'm about to build is kind of got some special meaning behind it because it's one of the very first saws I ever did. Um, I'm going to tell you a story of how I got started on chainsaws. I've told it once or twice before, but I'll tell it again. Uh, about, uh, let's see, about 13 years ago, I'm trying to think if that's right. Actually, about 14 years ago, I helped build a homeless shelter right behind a church. Uh, this is in Skowhegan, Maine, and the pastor is Pastor Barry, and he said that God called him to build a homeless shelter for men right behind his church. And most of his congregation said, you can't do that. We don't want that type of people around here. You can't have those types of people around the church. We'll stop coming. He lost like 85 to 90% of his congregation for building this homeless shelter. I know how to frame and I'm especially skilled in uh, rough carpentry. And so I volunteered my services to do a lot of the carpentry on that job uh, and some of the roofing. And then about a year after it was done, I was homeless. And um, I was staying in Bangor, Maine, about an hour and a half from Skowhegan, maybe two hours. And I decided to uh, move into the men's shelter. And this was two stories. And the second floor was the dorm. And it was like 64. Bunches of bunk beds, barely any space. Uh, between beds. It was very tightly packed, no AC, um, and I became the cook. Okay, so I cooked with one guy named Frankie and me, and we cooked two meals a day for 64 men every single day, seven days a week. Well, there was a family that came to the church, and they lived about a mile and a half away, and uh, I started volunteering my services for them as well. Uh, they had a farmhouse they were renting, and they had a really big yard, no lawnmower, uh, no weed eater. So uh, I bought a weed eater from a thrift store and was cutting their grass with a weed eater. Well, I also donated a bunch of money to fill their 350 gallon oil tank uh, to prepare them for winter. However, then I met a single mother who had two children and was working two full-time jobs and was struggling to figure out how she was gonna fill her oil tank before the winter came. And so what we ended up doing is uh, the family I was helping out decided that we're going to go ahead and put wood stove in their home and we would have a little bit of oil as backup so we took a bunch of 55 gallon drums and a hand pump and we pumped out about 310 gallons of oil and then hand pumped it into the single mother's um, oil tank. Well, this left us with we had to install a wood stove but then we had to cut wood, okay? So they had a bunch of poplars that were dead in their yard. And uh, I went to that thrift store and I bought me a little home lot chainsaw. Uh, I think it was a super easy if I remember right. Okay, a little 16 inch chainsaw. And that chainsaw was cutting wood good and everything. And then uh, I was, I'm still not the greatest at sharpening chains. I'm hella better than I used to be, but I really sucked at sharpening chains. And so that, that saw was not cutting very good and um, people started telling me about rakers on the chain. I had no idea. A lot of people don't know about the rakers. Uh, and somebody told me to file those rakers right all the way down. Big mistake for somebody that doesn't know what they're doing with a chainsaw. Well, that's where this scar came from. Uh, the saw was cutting great, but the first time I went to go into uh, another cut of this big poplar, it kicked back and cut my face open. Which side is it on? I think it's this side, neighbors, right here. And uh, nearly took my teeth out and went uh, like 90% of the way through my cheek. If it would have went a tiny bit more, it probably would have ripped my teeth out and all kinds of stuff. So I'm lucky to have both my eyeballs and a nose still and a full face. Uh, but that being said, uh, the saw just was not running right, wouldn't stay running, and so I decided to try and tinker on it. I know mechanics on cars enough to save my life and fix things in a pinch. I could never afford a mechanic, so I had to learn myself. My daddy taught me the basics, and I grew from there by having to fix my own chip. My neck is killing me, you guys. I don't want to work anymore, but I have to. Uh, I'm struggling to keep the channel afloat. I'm struggling to pay the bills. 
uh, just took on a lawnmower payment and so finances are really 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 tough uh, in order to make forty dollars a month I've got to put out like two videos a day because we are such a small channel and we don't get a lot of views if my videos were getting ten thousand and a hundred thousand views well one video a week uh, would probably give me an income to where I wouldn't have to work my ass off so much and cause myself this physical pain. Anyways, back on track, I put an ad on Craigslist that I was buying used chainsaws after I figured out what was wrong with that super easy. Well, I went to proceed to start taking it apart and ironically enough, by dumb luck, I pulled out one of the inlet screws to the carburetor and when I saw it had a pointy end, I said, well, Chet, that doesn't hold nothing in. I better put that back in. I put it back in and uh, I just must have got it just right somehow because I went back out and I'm like, I hope the chainsaw still runs because the saw would start, it just wouldn't idle uh, and it was very, very bulky throttle. You had to very carefully uh, uh, throttle it up and the saw ran great again and I was hooked from there. I started uh, tearing apart saws. I bought a bunch of saws from the thrift store uh, and, and started tinkering with them and this guy Jim responded to my ad and he asked me do you work on saws and I said well neighbor I, I, I work on them to sell them and for myself I've just started learning how and I'm self taught and he asked me do you have any MS 200 T's and I said no I don't even know what that is well that's when I learned that the 200 T was the holy grail for climbers uh, and he let me know that anytime I came across 200 T's he would buy them running or non running um, and would pay me to fix them up if I could. Well, he had a Husqvarna 346 XP and the other model neighbor was what's on my bench. I'm not going to tell you yet. And he asked me if I wanted to buy them and or if I would fix them. And I said, well, neighbor, this is, this is what I could pay for them. And uh, he didn't want to sell them at that price. And so uh, we came to an agreement. I said, well, I'll tell you what. If you're willing to pay for the parts, I will try to fix them, but please understand I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and uh, I won't charge you any labor. Uh, the, the, my earnings will be the experience and he said okay. Well his 346 XP, uh, I don't remember what we had to do with that, but I think we might have put a new motor on it we might not have. But the other model, which is on my bench, had to have a new motor. And I told him, this is how much an OEM one costs, but I found these really cheap ones online, and this is how much they cost. And so that's when I started my experience with Chino Motors. I bought a little $30 Chino Motor, um, and I rebuilt his two saws and gave them back to him. And he called me one day and told me that this saw that's on my bench, he said, it sucks. It doesn't have half the power it used to. What's the problem? I said, well, neighbor, it might be that motor. Would you like to buy an OEM motor and I'll return the other one and we can put the OEM motor on and see if that's the issue. He elected yes. So we bought an OEM motor, put it on this Husqvarna saw, and he was happy. From there, he became my greatest customer. Um, he bought probably three dozen 200 T's from me throughout the years before I got run over, uh, had me work on all his stuff uh, for his tree service, and uh, that's how I got started. So, neighbors, I have on my bench for you what many tell me and write in the forums online is one of the very best homeowner saws Husqvarna has ever put out. The reason you do not find a lot of them on the market is not because they're rare, but because apparently they don't break down. Y'all like to guess what the hell it is? Go ahead and comment real quick. And then, when I turn you down to the bench, you can find out if you're right or not. And then you can go down and comment on your comment, I was wrong or I was right. This Husqvarna chainsaw is a mid-range chainsaw that would more be considered, in my opinion, a farm saw or a ranch saw, but would be great for the homeowner and is also used by several professionals. I'm going to turn you down to the bench and we're going to get to work, damn it, neighbors. Oh, by the way, Grady might, might be buying this saw. He wants it. We'll see what happens. Here we are, neighbors. Here's our Husqvarna 359, neighbors. Okay. So, real quick, what we're going to do. I don't know how far we'll get because I'm hurting like hell. And I need to go relax. Plus, I need to edit footage for you guys. And I need to list some saws online. 
we've got an 025 that's rebuilt we need to list. Uh, we've got a uh, steel 026 rebuilt we need to list. And we've got a steel 028 rebuilt we need to list. And we've got an 036 that we need to make a draft for so that when we get our final part in for that, uh, we can test it. And if it's running, we can list it quickly. So the first thing I want to do is uh, the piston to this thing came up missing for like six months uh, when Dion was here. Not quite six months, probably three months. But it had been sitting in a box disassembled for several months before I washed it. I took this saw in on trade because the guy had a bunch of saws and he paid his bill partially with his saws. Uh, some of his saws. So our piston's in good shape. Obviously I need to clean it still. But I finally found the piston one day. And now that Grady is wanting uh, another Husqvarna saw, I've got a 55 and this 359, and I figure I might as well build it. That way Grady can come over and we can play with this saw, and hopefully he'll buy it. Okay, so to check our ring gap, I'm just going to take our ring off our piston. And I think this is a 49 mil. I can't remember, but if it needs a new ring and it's a 49 mil, I believe I have them inside. So let's check this ring gap here. I'm just going to put our ring in our cylinder here if I can struggling a little bit okay I don't want to scratch the cylinder up and we're gonna try and get this in a spot damn it this is my life neighbors this is what I go through all day every day all day every day it never fucking fails everything is a nightmare We're going to try and put it in a spot where it's not on the exhaust port, the intake port, or transfers. If we can get the son of a bitch to go in straight. And then we will take feeler gauges and check our ring gap. Oh, it looks really good. I don't even need to check it, neighbors. It is very good. Very good ring gap. It's almost closed all the way. I'm going to check it in a couple of spots here. This is really hard to show on the camera, but uh, our ring gap is really good. It's almost completely closed. I don't know if you can see it. Let me get the light. Maybe that will help. And then I've got to get rolling, neighbors, because I'm tired. If I can get my inspection light to turn on. Let's see if you guys can see it. Yeah, see, it doesn't, it doesn't do it justice on the camera. I do have the gap at the top, though, uh, the, uh, the groove at the top and it is now uneven. But I will go ahead for sake of, just because, we'll put a feeler gauge in there real quick. Uh, maybe, there they are. Okay, I'm thinking it's probably like 17 thou. So we'll go there first. Straighten our ring out. Let's see here. It might even be smaller than that. Yep, 17 thou don't fit. Let's try 14. Which it's really, this is a really tight ring gap. I think this saw, uh, he, he said he only ever used it a few times. It was like one of his, yeah, it's not even, we can't even get a 14 in there. It's almost like the ring isn't seated. Maybe I put a new ring on the piston already. Uh, because that is really tight. But nonetheless, I'm not going to go any lower for sake of time. We know that's low enough. And so right here we have... 359, this is a 59 cc saw, that's why I say it's more like a farm saw or a rancher saw, because it's almost 60 cc. I'm going to clean this piston up real quick. Okay, amazing what some brake parts cleaner and 600 grit uh, sandpaper will do. I've got my clips already in this, so obviously I will have to remove one. Let's see here. This one's about the same either side, which one will be easier to get in. Uh, and we have to check our squish. I do have the base gasket. I could probably reuse it with some uh, dressing, but I want to see if we can do a base gasket delete. And we are definitely at some point, well, sorry about the air compressor. We are definitely at some point going to gut this muffler and probably dual pipe it. Dual port it with uh, a pipe, half inch pipe. Okay, so next thing I want to do is check my squish. So I'm going to leave my ring off. I've got my bearing right here. Sorry about the air compressor, neighbors. It is what it is. Don't know what that's to. Must be for uh, our AV spring or something. And uh, we'll definitely have to check this off for air leaks because it has a decom valve and those uh, tend to leak. Okay, so I'm gonna oil my bearing. 
before I put it in here on the inside. Now we've got a little hole. I'm gonna oil the bearing a little more. Too much, too much oil is better, not enough. We want to give it a good start to its next life. Okay, there we go. And we'll go ahead and put our piston on. Let's do some switcherooskies here. Okay, there we are. Put our piston on. Get our ring out. Our, our wrist pin clip out. I am sorry about the compressor. I'm not going to pause for that compressor right now. See, I can't use my drift because of my clip. Here we are. You can still see our arrow. So arrow toward the exhaust. Push our wrist pin through with our drift there. Go ahead and put our clip back in. We're just gonna start it in the groove and then kind of bend it to go in. There we are, that's in good. Now we'll take our cylinder, it's easier, just leave your ring off. Put our cylinder on there. Uh, we will put a couple of bolts. Did you neighbor see what I just did with the cylinder bolts? Here they are. We'll put a couple of bolts in there. We just need two for this uh, application here. So we'll put one right here. And we'll put one in the front there. It's like we'll have to drop it down in. And then uh, I believe it's going to be a 4 mil or a 5 mil. Let's see here. I'm going to grab both. So we have both. Looks like a 4 mil. Okay, get that lined up, and we'll go ahead and just snug that up real quick, both those bolts, and then we'll take our soldering wire and we will check our squish. I'm going to have to probably use my flywheel, I'll put my flywheel on um, to make it easier to turn for me. Just trying to make sure I'm lined up there, okay, I do feel it going in the threads. Yep, because Grady's had me do most of his mufflers on his chainsaws. Uh, he likes his mufflers to be opened right up. And, uh, you know, he's been doing research on some saws. He just wants another mid-range saw. It's a little bit more powerful than what he was looking for, but I want to get this and the 55 together for him. That way he can come over and we can cut some wood. Might even take down this black walnut I have. Uh, and he can decide which saw he wants. Okay, so make sure my flywheel key is not sheared. It is not. Line that up with the groove on the crankshaft. Get our washer on. Uh, the, the nut has to go a specific way. You can see it's got a little lip there to go down inside the washer. Okay. I'm busy, people. Leave me alone. I'm trying to play with chainsaws. Okay, there we are. So we will take our soldering wire and we are just gonna put it to the front of our combustion chamber. Push it against the cylinder wall, raise this up, and literally squish our soldering wire. We'll do that a couple times. Go back and forth here. And I can already tell by the feel of it, we're gonna be able to leave that base gasket out. I think we're probably gonna have like a, a 22 or 23 thou squish, it feels like. Let's see if I, I'm way off or if I'm even close. Oh, I gotta put it on inches. Twenty-six thou. Okay, I was close. I said twenty-two or twenty-three at least. I was close. Not bad. Not a bad guess. I've only ever built one three fifty-nine, and like I said, I just told you the story on that. I haven't seen one in my shop or in front of me or with anybody else since then. So I have seen a few come up online and they, they go for a decent price for their size saw, but they're, they're not expensive. Um, a lot of saws that are rare and hard to find are expensive, okay? Um, but this one's not, surprisingly. And so 
a guy could afford to have this in his collection, you know, he's not going to have to pay $1,000 for it. But Brady's going to pay $100 million, billion, trillion, $300,000 for this one. And he's going to have to help me with some chores. You hear that, Grady? That's the deal, neighbor. I like Grady. He's a good guy. He's nice. Uh, he's He's got demons just like all of us, but he's fighting on the best he can. And right now, he's doing a good job fighting his demons. Okay, I'm trying to think if my intake boot needs to be put on this. Did There was a leak at the intake boot. Uh, but um, it, it's like a lot of the, husk, uh, the steel small saws. All it's got is this plastic clip. And actually, I'm, I'm feeling this plastic clip, and it's very loose. Uh, so that's all that holds it on. Um, but we're going to do our little trick and do uh, Yamabond on the inside here um, for extra security. And if it's a bad leak, I don't remember how bad it was, but if we do that Yamabond and we still get an air leak, we'll just start looking for a different intake boot. I do think I can get them online, but they were fairly pricey, if I remember right. And so that's why I decided, since it was... I must have decided it must not have been a bad leak uh, and I decided I'll permatex it so let's get our piston ring back on here and we'll go ahead and get our uh, Yamabond gasket maker on and uh, install our cylinder here okay we'll clean our surfaces really good we want any debris or oil or anything at all on our surfaces where we're making our gasket see there's some oil right there we don't want That'll cause air leaks. And what do air leaks do, neighbors? They come to seek, kill, and destroy our beautiful Husqvarna 359 chainsaw. We don't want that. Okay, so I got that surface cleaned up. We'll get this surface cleaned up. Okay. All right, there we are. Okay. Whoops. Cylinder bolt there. Get some Yama Bond and go ahead and put this beat arch together. We do have an, an uh, impulse port here that we don't want to fill with Yama Bond. We want to be careful around that, okay? We don't want it to get plugged up when we squish all this together. Okay, so we're just going to put a thin coat on each surface. You don't need a crap ton. Uh, too much is better than not enough, but too, too much is just as bad or worse than not enough. I have had saws where this gets inside the motor and didn't burn off, and because it got just gooped somehow in just the right spot, I've actually had it ruin a piston before. So, we don't want that. We don't want too much. Go thin around that port there. Okay. Okay. Trying to see, I don't think I need to put my, actually, I think I probably should put my impulse boot on, or my intake boot on before I mount this cylinder, it looks like. Okay, there's that surface. We'll do this one, same thing. And then if we have any excess, we'll go ahead and wipe it away. So we're just going to do it quick here, and then wipe the excess. is a little bit easier than trying to be fancy. Take my time. Plus it's humid in here and this dries really fast in humid weather, believe it or not. The hotter it is, the faster the chit dries. Unless it's like 120 degrees, then the chit ain't going to dry. Not going to cure. Almost there, neighbors. Okay. I know if you're new to the channel, you're thinking, gosh, this guy says neighbors so much. But go watch Tin Man. He says friends like 350% more than I say neighbors. He says friends in like every sentence pretty much. Okay, friends. So what we're going to do today, friends, is friends. We're going to go over to the lathe, friends. And this saw, friends. And here's what happened, friends. And then, friends, I'll tell you what next, friends. That's what he does. And I'm sorry, but he's fake. I don't like him, and I'm not afraid to say it. I know he's an extremely popular YouTuber, but he acts like he's humble. Says he's just a humble guy. He's not. He's not humble. He doesn't give a shit about his viewers. He's so fake. I'm sorry. When somebody puts a comment that they're going to come rape your wife and beat your child, you don't put a heart on it. I cannot believe some of the comments he hearts. That means he's not even reading them. He's just hearting it. That's silly to me. Why would you do that? Okay, there we are. Get some around this little impulse hole here. that 
excess off that hole. A little bit more on the bottom surface there. It'd be kind of hard to get this stuff on in these, but I do this with a lot of intake boots, just extra security, and it, it, it won't cure to the rubber itself, so it kind of just stays moist and acts as kind of its own rubber gasket as well. So it's almost like putting a rubber grommet in there. Okay, so that goes on our cylinder like so. Maybe you have to go on because you're drying. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm trying to close the clip and I shouldn't be. I should have it open. There we go. Okay, looks good. Close that clip, maybe. Now I can't get the clip closed, neighbors. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Impulse line is right there. Everything looks good. So now we'll take a ring compressor here. Go ahead and compress this ring. Whoops. You want to leave the compressor as low as possible so that our cylinder can sit on top of it. And yes, this will touch our Yama Bond a little bit, but I have found that it, it typically doesn't do it enough to where I have to add more, so I'm usually okay. Sometimes I have to add a little bit more after I put the cylinder on, but with this one, actually, no, it won't. Ah, shit. I let it slip. Nope. I'm going to have to do it again. I let it slip. Okay, try this again. Oh, I didn't oil this. That's the other thing. We want to get oil in our cylinder. We're going in dry, neighbors. We don't want to go in dry. We don't want to hurt our girl here. You're going dry, you'll hurt your girl. You'll hurt your Husqvarna 359's internals, insides. You'll hurt its insides. Okay? Scuff it all up and ruin it. You don't want that. You want to keep her nice and smooth. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Get our compressor out of the way down here. That is exactly why it's not a full circle. Slide it right off. Normally you use what is called a piston block, but uh, when you have Permatex, you don't use that. Okay, there we are. Line everything up. Looks good, neighbors. Let's go ahead and get some screws in it. And then we'll look at what we're going to go ahead and do next. I'm not doing anything with the muffler yet. I want to get the saw running first because I like to see the differences. Now I didn't do the gasket to see the difference, but that's because uh, it's a little bit more work to take a top end off than it is a muffler, okay? So that, this one we're gonna have to use some pliers on to sneak it down in there. Put her down in her hole, okay, there we go. Just want to get that started, and I'll move to this front one. Corner to corner here. The first one, I'm just letting them uh, seat down just until I feel it touch the seat. Well, if we can get in the bolt itself. I've lost it here. There we go. Okay, there's that. That one bottomed out. Get this one started here. Ah, damn it. Doing myself dirty. There we go. Excellent. Okay, let's keep this one down. Tighten them all up. Can't get it in the hole, neighbors. Let's go 
or in my life. Because I haven't had a hole to get it in since 2011. Probably why I'm so angry all the time, you guys. Genesis 2.18 says, It is not good that man should be alone. I shall make him help me for him. And that scripture is partly why some of my neighbors either hate Jesus now or just don't believe in him. They believe there's a higher being, but that it's not Jesus because he has taken their, their long-time spouse away to various forms of death, one including cancer. One of my subscribers lost his wife to cancer. Uh, I know another one has lost a, his wife to other sickness. Another one has lost his wife to a car accident. And I think we even have some female subscribers that have lost a husband. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people that causes them to lose their faith. And I could understand why. Honestly, I can. So, there's that. Okay, we got our flywheel on. So, I suppose we can go ahead and put our coil on next. Got my coil here. With my wires let's see here uh, I believe this end will be our switch this end will hook to our our wire uh, coil let's go ahead and clean this off these terminals off though so we want to make sure we have a good connection here there we are it's a little butter hey okay, so we will connect that to our coil here like so Oh, well, did I grab the wrong end? Looks like I did. Let's see here. Let's see, let's see. We'll go down there. Okay. And then this one will go on one of our bolts here. I am presuming it's going to be the back one. Okay. I thought there would be a shield. There it is. This piece here is going to route our wires. Let's go ahead and get our coil bolted down here. Get our air gap set. I still can't find my damn tool I like to use for my 20 thou air gap. I'm hoping it's on one of my bins from when I was working on saws in town while I was trying to sell saws a few weeks back. I might have taken it with me. Okay, go ahead and get that in there. And let's get it started. I've got my 4 mil in my uh, drill here already. But i got a dirty bolt head. Apparently I didn't do a very good job cleaning this bolt head. I can't remember if I cleaned this all or if Dion did. can't recollect. I think Dion did because the piston disappeared. He had it mixed in with another saw. Okay, here we are. And I'm using Loctite because this is a 59cc saw, older saw. So we don't want our bolts to bite, 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 blah, 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 blah. That's all, folks. We don't want our bolts to vibrate out. That's what I was trying to say, and this wire is actually in our way. So let's get our coil bolted down first, and then we'll put that other wire on. Whoops, I messed up here. I'll turn that this way. There we go. That's butter, and I didn't like the way that was going in. It was crooked. Okay, we'll grab a business card here for our 20 thou air gap. We can't find our damn tool. There's that. We will turn it to our, our north and south poles, our magnet. All the way over here. There we go. And then we will go ahead and tighten these down. I'll do that. And then I'll take my hand turner here and finish them off. I like it. Feels good. Plug that wire up. And we can put this... Uh, fan in here. There's actually an air mover I need to put in. Let's see. These go um, I'm trying to remember. Boy it's been so long since I took this damn saw apart. Let's see here. I believe this goes gonna, yeah that's gonna go like so. So let's get this bolt out. They must go together because I had them together. So this one will go like so and does this go over it or does it end up going over here? Uh, I'm very sorry, neighbors. I don't honestly know. I've, I've forgotten since I put this all together. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me look at the back of my recoil and see if that gives us any clues. It does not. It does not. No clues, no clues. Let's see. There's two little pins, it looks like. I don't see nothing here where it would go. Uh, doesn't look like it would go there. doesn't look like it would go there. 
I feel like it's part of this one, but I'll, I'll be, golly guys, I can't remember. Can't remember, I might have to look up an IPL. I don't see how it would go, it wouldn't fit down in there. Um, I don't think it would go like so. Um, I'll bet you. Oh, that's not right either. Made in Sweden. Okay, I'm gonna have to look this part up, unfortunately. So I might end up having to go backwards here on this part a little bit, but for now, we'll go ahead and put this bolt in. Okay, I'm not gonna lock tight it because we might have to take it back out. Yeah, I don't think that goes down there with that one. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't seem like it would go there. Okay, so for now, we'll leave that out. This doesn't give us any clues either. Wires, route, spark plug wire routes there. It might go on top of this too. Okay, so let's see here. Get our wires out of the way. And we'll set this in place. Like so. Our spark plug boot has to be up through there first. Now we'll set this in like so. Put the spark plug boot or the spark plug lead wire in its groove. We want to get this lined up proper, like so. Okay, now these two wires, they will clip in down here, and then they will run right along this channel, and they have little clips that you can push them into. In the groove, make sure you get the wire in there, because that would be a catastrophe if one of those wires slips out and snatches up with your recoil. Okay, there's a little hole to feed these wires through, okay, like so. There's that, and I still am not seeing, I'm just not seeing, you know what, I wonder if this is a chip guard, I'll bet you, nope, it doesn't seem to be a chip guard either, not a chip guard, I'm baffled, I cannot recollect where this damn thing came off from, I cannot recollect. I mean, unless it goes down in there somewhere like this, but it doesn't seem to be that, that that's the case. Uh, we'll figure it out, neighbors. For now, I'm going to go ahead and put my recoil on, but I'm not going to Loctite it, just in case we have to go backwards right there. I just have to try to remember that I did not, um, I did not Loctite my recoil bolts or screws, okay? One, two, three, four. Oh, I meant to send Grady a picture and say it has begun. Okay, there's that. Now, put our spark plug in here. Uh, I want to use some anti seize because this is actually the spark plug that came out of it. So, this saw is not used very much, it doesn't seem. Uh, Ted Neitzel. Thank you, Ted Neitzel. I used to Loctite on spark plugs um, for my local saws. I wouldn't do it on ones that I was sending out, but because uh, they're really technically, this is called a crush washer, and technically, technically, by the spark plug manufacturer, you're only supposed to install these once, okay? Technically. But plenty of service manuals for old saws talk about putting the spark plug back in and not replacing it. So... I just like to use this anti-seize that, that Ted turned me on to, and I like to use this for oil bolts as well on saws where it goes into the crankcase or into the uh, bottom end. So there's a hole all the way through for your oil bolts, and that helps uh, seal them off so you don't have air leaks at your oil bolts. So thank you, Ted Neitzel. I always appreciate when you guys share your tips and tricks with me. Some of them I've used, some of them I have not, okay? Now, since I am not yet going to do anything with the muffler, I believe we could go ahead and put it on. We've got our muffler and our felling spike here. Uh, let's see, I don't see a muffler gasket, however. This may not have had one, and I do not believe I have one that size. So if we do need a muffler gasket, we'll have to order one. Trying to see which way this goes. Not go that way. 
Okay, that looks correct right there. So it goes this way with our muffler that way. I don't believe I have this gasket. I just don't think I do. Okay. We are to uh, let's clean the head of this bolt real quick. We don't have issues. There's that one. That one. That one. Actually, it looks like those are the two mounting bolts. It will be five mil. That makes more sense. Yes, it's these. These N6s are our mounting bolts, so that will go in there. There. So there's our M our five mil. That one through there. Yeah, I'm gonna check real quick if I have a gasket for this because it really should have one. It does not appear we will have one for this particular model, model but uh, this is going to be the last part of the uh, video um, for sake of time. It's a lot easier to edit a 25 minute video than it is a one hour video. Also, it's a lot easier to get you guys, keep you guys' attention uh, with shorter videos. And so I've been trying to work on uh, doing my builds in sections. So... Um, Tighten these down, okay, and that's going to be it for part one of the Husqvarna 359 reassembly. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the thumbs up to support the channel anyways. Um, comment down below what you guys think and subscribe to the channel and consider becoming a member for just $3.99 a month or $7.99 a month because guess what? The most recent video I put up for my members only... I got fucking pissed and I didn't edit the video. I just let you guys see my frustrations and my irritations and my aggravations. So you can laugh at me. When you remember, you get to see that chip more often. Okay? Until next time, neighbors, be kind to one another. Everyone is facing a battle. I love all you neighbors, even though I really suck at it. Hashtag persevere, right?